What's that shirt coming out today in Rain Shadow Legends? Welcome to the video, guys. Glad to have you here. Thanks for taking some time out of your day. Chilling with me, talking a little bit of Rain Shadow Legends. Guys, you, you ever do this? I mean, you must be the same way. The majority of you guys who aren't like eyes peeled 24-7 to the Facebook and whatever of Rain Shadow Legends. Why not? You may or may not have the same experience that I had the other day where you open up a shard or two and you get this champion that you never even knew existed in the game. And that happened to me, as I just said. It is a high elf, new void epic champion. First of all, the avatar, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the veil, maybe it's the, the hat, I don't know. But he looks freaking cool. It's Ethlin, Ethlin the Golden. And look at the aesthetics here, man. He's got kind of like a little executioner vibe going on, right? What you know about gold? Hello. What you know about gold? Hello. And now you, the humble I don't know any backstory for this champion. There's no lore, unfortunately. There's only six reviews on this dude, but you know, so far so good. You can't read anything into him, but you know, you like to see that the first thing that when you get a champion, right? Uh so is this dude any good, right? Of course, immediately when I pulled him, I maxed him and I gave him a try. I have to say out the gate, let's review his kit and then I'll talk a little bit about my findings as we go, right? So his A1, it's protective cleave. Attacks one enemy. The multiplier is 3.4, a godlike damage rating here on his A1. In terms of multipliers plus his base attack, not bad, 1432, especially for an epic champion. Uh, plays a shield buff on this champion equal to 10% of the damage dealt for two turns. Also heals this champion by 10% of the damage dealt if his HP is less than 50%. It's a nice A1. It's not a game changer. On the A2, Paralyzing Strike. This is on a four turn cooldown, but he does have an extra turn on his A3. We'll get to that in a moment. Attacks all enemies not once, but twice. First hit has 100% chance of placing a block active skills for two turns. The second hit has 100% chance of placing a true fear for one turn if enemies are not under the block active skills debuff. Now listen, in a perfect world, we would have both of these debuffs, block active skills and true fear. Unfortunately, we only get block active skills because he's void affinity anyway. So the majority of the time, let me let me put it this way. I've been playing this dude now for a couple days on the account, right? And I am not getting any true fears. Very, very, very few, right? Because most most of the most times we're landing the block active skills, and that's it. That's the end of the day. Uh, or the resist is so high that we can't land it. Thus, we're not landing the true fear anyway. So it's kind of weird that he has that. I don't like those sort of skills where if one doesn't land, Fenax has that too on his A2, right? Uh, what is Fenax? Is. I, I don't really do you guys like that do any of you out there like like that I guess it's better than nothing right he has a block active skills for one turn I'm sorry block buffs for two turns and then he has block active skills for one turn if block buffs doesn't land kind of awkward no well at least we have block active skills for two turns the first thing that I thought of in terms of a comparison we haven't even got to the a3 yet but the first thing or is passive First thing I thought of is, okay, is this dude like a mini Karato Fox Hunter, right? He has a block act of skills on a four turn cooldown with an AOE attack and the multipliers shockingly are not that far off. Now Karato, you know, love him or hate him, he smacks with this ability. The multiplier is 4.65 godlike damage rating. Granted, he has a little over 100 more attack as well in terms of a base attack, but we're talking about a, uh, an epic versus a legendary champion. And there's more to this dude's kit, which we'll get to in what am I doing in Sacred Order? Come on, come on, Ash. Get with the program here, bro. Ethan, the golden, here we go. A3. Places an, an increased crit damage on this champion for three turns and an increased accuracy on this champion for two turns, then grants an extra turn. So now I'm like, okay, we get the extra crit damage to really help out on the damage on the A2. And then we get the increased accuracy so that we can land that block active skills without having to go all out accuracy in every single, like an accuracy on the chess piece, for example, accuracy everywhere or triple perception. We don't have to stress it that much because we get the big 50% increased accuracy. So if we can build this dude around like a 400 accuracy, which is kind of where we have him in this video, I mean, it gets bumped all the way to 600 in battle once this buff is there then we get the extra turn we come into the a2 we deal a lot of damage now his a2 multiplier is it's a 2.1 
godlike damage rating, but it's a two-time hitter. So a 4.2 if you want to add them up, right? Uh, so not bad at all. Now, let me actually show you this multiplier because we haven't even got to the passive yet. And I'm and now I'm starting to think, wait a second, forget Corrado. Is this dude, could, could he be like a mini Genbo? The best attack base epic nuker in the game? What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? As you can see, this is uh, this is our guy here, right? 3.4 godlike rating on Ethlin's A1, a 2.1 godlike damage rating on his A2, two time hitter, and then again the self buffing, and then you can see the passive ignores 10% of defense when attacking support, defense, and HP based champions. So that's basically everybody except for nukers, right? Because, you know, it, it, support includes attack-based support champions. So really, we have a built-in ignore 10% of defense when we're attacking anybody who's not a squishy nuker. Anytime we really need it. That doesn't sound like much, 10% ignore defense, but that is really, really valuable in this dude's kit. Now we can put him in Savage Gear, Helm Smasher, and then we'll be ignoring 60% of defense if all things go well, right, against these tankier champions that we're facing. So I'm like, okay, this is this sounds really freaking good, man. Like this is, I'm, I'm getting excited here. And we compare him to Genbo. Genbo, of course, has a four multiplier on this AOE attack. They have, does it have his base attack here? His base attack is 1409. So right in the same neighborhood, right? And then we have more multipliers on our AOE than Genbo does. Uh, granted, it's two hits, 4.2 versus one hit and four. And then Genbo has the increased crit rate, increased crit damage, grant an extra turn. This dude's like a new Genbo. Or is he? Why you want to leave me? I don't know. But again, it's a promising kit. Accuracy in all battles by 40 is his aura. As we just mentioned, does not work against bosses there on the strike at the heart. But in the arena, in waves, this dude is legit. Now, faction wars, arena, dungeon waves, areas like that. And again, Doom Tower especially. He's a DPS and a control built into one which is unique and hard to find, especially with the self buffs and all this other stuff in this game. So very, very cool kit. I wanted to try them out. Let me show you how I have them built, guys, and then we'll run right, jump right into the arena. I also have a Doom Tower uh, secret room on tap for you guys as well. So of course, I started by building him as a nuker, right? Now, there's a case to be made that we can just make this champion super fast as like an uber control champion. Only problem there is stone skin again in the arena, right? And polymorph as well. I mean, we have kind of two things going against us to some extent. So I decided instead of building him with like 350 speed, something crazy, we would just build him like semi fast for a nuker, right? 228, eh, average, okay? And then with 100% crit rate, some crit damage, a pretty basic build, but again, keep in mind, we're getting that 389. We're going to get that increased accuracy and the increased crit damage to help boost us up from 228 and 389 here. So again, the gear that I have on this dude is not insane, right? I, I, I made a point not to take all my best gear because some of you guys really hate when I do that. So I hear you, man. I hear you. We put accuracy on the banner, right? Crit damage, obviously, on the amulet. This is a good uh, amulet here. That layer, you know what? Let's see what we get on the ascension. Have you guys been, I've been trying to get like as many of these lesser, what are they? Oh, I get crit damage too. Ooh, I love it. What are these things called again? Extract, my bad. I've been trying to uh, farm as much lesser extract as I can just to see what stats I get. But in this case scenario, I love it. Now we get a little bit of extra crit damage as well. This is a very, very nice amulet, huh guys? Uh, so we get a ring here. Let's go ahead and just do it, right? Let's just use the more extract, get a little bit more attack there. We don't even have it all glyphed out, but I will. You know, it's a pretty good ring, too, now that I look at it. I will use a big boy glyph uh, on the attack, and we'll stop there. So, I'm going nuking, obviously. Crit damage and attack and accuracy for obvious reasons as well. Uh, on the boots, we have speed. On the chest, we have attack percentage. On the gauntlets, we have crit damage. And then just looking for as much crit rate as you can see here on the substats on everything else. We do have savage and perception on this champion now i will say if you want to go like uber 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 stun control this does similar to a mighty uko similar to a bivalve of the thorn it has a two-time chance to land a stun from a, an artifact set 
Now, you don't need the accuracy, so you don't have to worry about that, even though he's got plenty of it, right? But you could put him in a stun set if you wanted to and make him an annoying control champion. Obviously, a champion like a, uh, a, a Mighty Uka or something, the reason it's so popular, that meta in a stun set, is because he's also removing buffs at the same time, putting block buffs and stunning. It has that beautiful synergy. But hey, this dude, because the first, it's a two-time hitter, the first hit has one effect, the second hit has another effect, that means is coded in a way where we do get two chances at stunning. So in those circumstances, if you wanted to make them all out control and sacrifice some damage, you could come down the defensive tree and you could go with uh, Harvest Despair, getting that leech as well, some healing, and then going down with Fearsome Presence to improve that stun chance to 23% uh, percent times 2 on that A2, okay? So that's an alternative way to build him, but I like getting some damage out of this dude. I went down Support Tree. I picked up some extra accuracy. I went down Offense Tree and a, a pretty standard Nuker build here. Ruthless Ambush, a little bit more bang for our buck in the first hit. Uh, also down to Opportunist, Cycle of Violence. Came down to Helm Smasher as my Tier 6 Mastery. Obviously, starting out with Keen Strike, Deadly Pursuit. Precision and uh, and shield breaker. So uh, let's go ahead and give this dude a try, man. I mean, you see the build. We talked about stat priorities on this champion. I would go with uh, crushing rend probably uh, for a a blessing on this champion if I had them on him. All right, guys. So here we are in the arena. Let's give this dude a go. So we have him on the same team with Gembo just because I like kind of having him as a, as a control slash nuker. Not just your only nuker on the team. I like having two damage dealing options here. So let's go ahead and do a damage check first, right? Genbo again has his own ability, increased crit rate, increased crit damage. I do have more crit damage and more speed on Genbo, so keep that into, in your mind here when comparing damage. But he's dealing what, from 40 to 70k damage? Not too bad. You know what I'm gonna do actually, guys? Let's let's take him out of the team now, right? Let's take him out. Was It, it was this squad right here. Let's take uh, Genbo. Yeah, let's let's just let's just remove him. Three man this team, right? And now let's compare that damage, right? The ultimate damage test, except for that Genbo has a little bit more crit damage. Uh, but anyway, let's let's self buff. Come in here. So it was like forty to sixty k. Let's slow it down. See what we get here. It's around sixty to eighty k. Because he's hitting twice. I'm not sure if you saw the second hits there. Obviously, a two-time hitter versus a one-time hitter. So again, man, I mean, that's not freaking bad, right? Let's go against this squad here. Now, I don't really... I'm going to run Gambo on the same team now because I don't really love going in with three-man teams here. But not bad for the damage, right? All right, going to come in here again. We are going to debuff. Going to come in self-buff. Let him have it, Gembo. This is not a knock on Gembo. He's just like, dude, I still got it, bro. Put me in. Put me in, coach. <laughs> All right. All right. Fair enough, Gembo. We love you. The cool thing about both these champions, though, is that they're both void, right? They're both void affinity. So we don't have to worry about like affinity matchups and stuff like that. I guess the question that does be uh, beg itself, though, is what if you already have Gembo? Like, would it make sense, especially if you're like free to play? And, you know, you're limited on resources. Would it make sense to go in here and, and max out this champion? I guess it's a lousy answer, but I guess it depends, right? It depends on what you need. It depends on it depends on where you are. Do you need him for Faction Wars? Do you need a little bit of control? Because I would say, overall, I think that Genbo, even though his multipliers aren't quite there, comparatively, I still think he's a little bit better of a nuker, right? Uh, I don't know, but it's, it's kind of close. But I kind of think he's a little bit better. Anyway. What I was made for. Way to go ahead and way to go ahead and waste his ability there, Ash. So do as I say, not as I do. We're probably gonna lose this one. Let me just put on auto for a second here. But man, I mean, I have to say, considering Genbo has more crit uh damage anyway on this particular build. Uh, I have to say that I'm pretty dang impressed with this champion, guys. That's his A132K against a tankier kind of reviver champion too, right? Not too bad. Are we gonna win this one? Two revivers left standing, an Elva and an Arbiter, and now three revivers just like that. Ooh, this is an annoying team, huh guys? <laughs> three revivers and a UDK. That's uh, welcome to the arena 2023, boys and girls. This is what we've got going on here. Uh, if you're, I was gonna say, if you're one of these people, shame on you, the all defensive no nuker, but I can't really say that. If it's effective for you, then just, you know, who am I to, who am I to besmirch your strategies? Uh, just not my cup of tea. 
What about you guys? Any of you guys do that? Just put in like four massive tanks and just hope that people avoid your team. Hey, if it works, like I said, it works. Listen, we might win this one, honestly. I think we will. And I'm kind of stubborn, so I kind of want to. But I also want to show you more battles. So let's let's end this one. Let's end this one. And let's go. Let's keep going here. Let me do one more arena battle. We've done a damage check. You guys kind of see what's going on here, right? Let's do one more. And then I want to take him, like I said, to, uh, to a little Doom Tower action for you guys. All right. What do you guys think so far of this guy's damage and stuff? With Gembo, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to just take a pass here and do one more kind of damage check on this dude. Granted, pretty squishier champion. Well, not Helicath and, and Rector aren't squishy. Uh, again, 40k times two. The second hits you barely even saw because they weren't necessary there. I got to say, man, he's a, he's a legit nuker, dude. He's a legit control nuker, which is super cool to see in the epic category. To me, this is exactly what I want to see out of void epic champions. You know have a decent use case, right? Like, bring something to the table here, guy. All right, Demon Spawn. I'm sure we have an Epic only something. Epic Spirit, nah, no dice there. We're Epic Void. Uh, champions from High Elves only, and there it is. I have a team all ready to go. Hey guys, what do you say we run them with all these beast champions, all these extremely good Legos, and just see what the damage differential is? Wanna do that? Okay, so we have them here with, uh, with oh, that was him, dude. That was him on the left. Just laying the smack down, killing everybody. That's not too bad, man. That's not too bad. It's no Yannicka or Ethos. Or maybe it was. It wasn't that bad, man. It wasn't that bad comparatively, right? Very, very cool champion here. I like this dude, man. It's just a matter of what you need, though. It is. I don't think he's a no-brainer max out for everybody. But again, if you could use help and control all in one champion, either in the arena, you want to have some fun, or in Faction Wars, or somewhere like more pragmatically in the game, boom. He just killed everybody there, dude. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> Listen, I'm overreacting. He was fastest, so he got next turn in line. So that's why his damage is this absurd. But... I still think it's noteworthy, right? I still think it's noteworthy. If Ethos went ahead of, of e e Ethlon there or whatever, uh, he would have had extremely good numbers too. But I will say that the fact that he could one-shot with the best of them was super impressive. I love this champion, guys. I think he's super, super legit. Invest in him if you want to. Let me know what you think of this champ. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, take care, guys.